<laughs> so we know that leadership is, is key and so too is the contribution and participation of others. Our next speaker will challenge us to play our part in making that happen. We have much to learn and he has much to share. Dr. Dougal Th Thorburn is no stranger to these hills of Wellington. In his spare time, he's seen cycling across this little here. And I believe he did cycle home earlier um, this morning. So he is going to be joining us uh, via Zoom. Uh, but we also must take a moment to also recognize Dr. Dougal for his contribution in enhancing the healthcare home model of care to honor Te Tiriti or Waitangi. This was huge for the team and we're grateful. Without further ado, please put your hands together, home at Paki Paki, for Dr. Dougal Thorburn. Tēnei te mihi ki a koutou katoa. Te mea tuatahi, e te rangatera. Tēnei te mihi ki a koe. A e tahi ihi, iwi o tēnei rohi. Tēnei te mihi ki a koutou. Tarana ki whānui, te ati awa, nga te tō rangatera. Nō reira, e te kaiwhakahairi o te hui nei. Ko Kalebra Aotearoa, nei rā tami i ki a koutou, e nga hoa e whā. Kua huhue mai nei ki te whiti whiti kōrero nga kaupapa e pa ana e te whakamana nga hāpori Aotearoa. Nō reira, tēnā koutou. Ko Waiau, ko Tainu i te waka, ko Wai katoa, me nga tangata o te tiriti o ku iwi, ko... E noho ana mātou ko tōku whānau kei whanganui a tāra, ko Dougal Thorburn tōku ingoa. He tākuta a iwi, kei te taha o National Screening Unit, he tākuta a whānau kei te taha o Oratoa Health Services, nō reira. Kia ora, everybody. So I'm a GP, been with Oratoa on and off for about 10 years, and have worked in high-needs communities for a similar period, including that in the hut. Um, and um, also I've recently qualified as a public health doc and am trying to decolonize the National Screening Unit um, at the moment. It's a big job, but um, with everyone together, we will get there. Um, one of the, uh, I start today with a whakatoki, once I can get my slides to turn over. There we go. E kore au e ngaro he kākono e rūia mai i rangiatia. I shall never be lost. I am a seed sown from Rangiatia. Now, for those who are perceptive, these are Korwhai seeds. Um, it's the first day of spring in the Western calendar. Um, koanga, kohanga means nest. Um, this whakatoki is important to me personally. Um, personally, um, I've gone through many challenges in my life and um, this whakatoki helped me through it. Uh, in the in the darkest times, um, that we shall never be lost. Um, that we are each of us uh, seeds sown in Rangiatia, a special place. And I see this Fakatoki with everyone that I see um, personally, um, but also I see my role in in, in my public health world. That world that I have a huge responsibility uh, to to care for those individuals. Uh, to just provide nurturing environments for those individuals. I also work in forests, um, which I'll share with you later. And, and I see that the, what we have now is that when we're thinking about growing forests, we don't think about five years. We, we don't think about 10 years. We don't think about a lifetime. We've got a plan for our forest at uh, Te Rai Kaiho, um, uh, te whenua o Ngāti Tō Rangatira, uh, out there 800 years to get a genuine real forest. And I think that's kind of similar to what we need to build communities. So let's, let's think about now what we have, the vision for 800 years. So today, really, I'm just going to talk to you about, well, what do, we, what do I think? These are just my thoughts about to achieve pai ora. And what do we need to enable this high quality primary health care, primary and community health care um, in my locality. So just a brief um, stepping back, like I was curious to know, well, what is this pai order word? Where does that come from? Pai means like a, an, an, 
a nest, something level, like a horizon or it all cause pai kakariki, could be like a, a perch. Um, and I'm like, oh, where does that come from? I knew it was in like the pie order thing in 2020, you know, like that's Whakamaua on the right there and also He Korowai Oranga. And then I like, well, when did He Korowai Oranga? It used to be Fano Order. And so where did Pai Order come in? So there was a lecture that um, the Pairangi lectures that Mason Jury came in called Pai Order Māori Health Horizons, where um, Mason set out the, the vision for the future of um, health in Aotearoa. And that was incorporated into the updated uh, He Korowai Oranga in 2014. Um, now, Pai Ora has three elements. Um, as you can see on the, the right, uh, it has Wai Ora, uh, healthy environments, Modi Ora, healthy individuals, and Fano Ora. I, I think this is cool because um, just as Helmut, Helmut spoke about, uh, that really it's about Fano and but it's also about the environment that we all depend on. Like, let's take, for example, Porirua Harbour. Like, that used to be a breadbasket for, for the people of Ngāti Tōrangatera. Like, let us, let us, like, collectively work to return it to that state. And that is a collective effort. And that is the thing that will give us pai ora um, on our journey. So let us engage with those things. Um, so pai ora. Uh, so, look. I just want to back up there that Whakamaua, um, so in the midst of that 2019, the Y2575, uh, the collection of the Waitangi Tribunal, did a bunch of stuff. Out of that came the, um, the principles, the new principles of the Tiriti of Waitangi that are put in the Whakamaua plan of 2020. Um, so you guys know that, like you just need to remember them um, and think about them and think about what they mean. Um, I remember the word portai if you're just, you know, like trying to study them. Um, but essentially this is really about power sharing a lot of this and I'll get into that later. Um, but um, it's it's really just the, the what we need with this is that at the design, delivery and monitoring of health services, uh, whether it's at a governance level, whether it's a partnership, let's help, let's get Māori um, leading it, uh, ideally, as as um, Helmut said, let's resource the uh, Māori uh, uh, Māori appropriately, um, in order to be able to have services and uh, options for services uh, that align with their aspirations. Now, part of that, as we might find out, that it may not be health services at all. Um, health may be, health's a bit boring. Some people find health boring, particularly like youth. Like, I find health a little bit boring, um, so therefore I'd rather plant forests. But that might be just as good for me as, you know, doing something that's uh, in, engaging with the health service, or it might be better. So um, let us be open. Um, now, we've heard about the pay order legislation a fair bit. Uh, uh, you can easily find it online. I've just like put the principles down the side there and just like gone, hey, look, pretty much you've got the principles embedded into this legislation. So as well as like a uh, a, a, a duty that we have with respect to our tatiriti or watangi responsibilities, which is also in legislation. So it sort of just cranks up the duty a little bit more. But moreover, like if we could look at any ethical framework, whether it's a deal ontological one, like that's a duty based one, or whether it's a consequentialistic one, like that's the equity one, um, or whether it's a virtual, like what's the right thing to do, whatever case, whatever frame we use, um, you know, like what we need to do is really um, just we need to, all our activities need to align towards pay order. Um, now, just to acknowledge the healthcare home model of care, as, um, as we heard uh, that I just saw when back in like, maybe it was 2018, I was like involved, um, Helmut, this is before your time, but um, trying to lead the healthcare home model within auditor practices. It was about, yeah, 18. And, and like, I just didn't, I struggled, eh? Like I struggled to get like the bite, the requirement, and I, and I think one of the reasons for that was that the, 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 the community just didn't see themselves within it. Now, um, and I, and I recognize that there's, you know, many reasons for that. Um, and, but I, I saw that one of the, one of the things that we needed to do was align it more closely with like a vision. And we also needed to be really clear on our values. Um, so that's what we, we attempted to do um, in 2020 that was published and that's the updated version on the right. I see the cover cover, aren't they? Those leaves, um, uh, good, good plants there. Uh, now as Helmut said, yes, well done Helmut, um, top of the class, uh, from an MBA to an MPH. No, 
Um, just that's um, just indicating that, hey, look, so much of our uh, health is not, not related to the health system. However, in saying that, I think that the health system, particularly primary health, has a huge opportunity, as I'll discuss later briefly, to improve population health because done well and done comprehensively, it enables people um, access to the social determinants of health that otherwise they're marginalized from due to systemic racism and other determinants of health. So looking at the determinants of health, we know this stuff, you know, that's modified from uh, Dale Green and Whitehead. Um, this one's modified because it considers key determinants of health that we need to think about, the global determinants. Um, we've got our local determinants of a biodiversity loss. We only need to look at the floods around Wellington to see the impact of climate change. And remember that those impacts of climate change will have a disproportionate uh, effect on marginalised and communities that have been systematically affected by racism and colonisation over the years. Unfortunately, that includes Māori communities. So there we have on the left, um, there we have uh, Uawa Tolaga Bay getting hammered by um, uh, the, the slash uh, and the houses getting wiped out. Are they insured? How can we support these communities that are disproportionately affected by these, uh, by these events? Um, and that's just a, a picture of, um, that's Luke uh, and Marere. Uh, um, they have just approached us to, that's our little conservation group and we're involved, that we're involved with this, um, Craig setting a trap on the right. Um, and really we're just like looking at ways to collectively um, try and manage cuttle pittosporum crassifolium, which is like a pest species out at Tarai Kaiho, um, because uh, Ngati Tōranga Tera, there's um, Tapitoranga just behind my head there on the right. Um, and that's the island and they, uh, Ngati Tōra have recently been given mana whenua status over that finally. Koe ano. Um, so I've got to hurry up. Um, so look, you guys know this, Māori are three and a half, three point six times more likely to be uh, in those mesh blocks uh, that are um, indicated on the NZ DEP of being um, significantly deprived. Uh, now, what I do wanna say that a determinant that is of these is to do, and a determinant of this is racism and colonization. Colonization, one definition is when resources are extracted from indigenous people and given to newcomers. We need to acknowledge that now that there is still unequal distribution of power, privilege, resources and opportunities at the moment in Aotearoa, New Zealand. It is happening, it happens now, um, and we need to be actively engaged, all of us, in decolonizing the health sector and decolonizing any um, domains that we come across. Thus, uh, for that reason, I'd encourage you to look at the um, recent position statements um, that is uh, screenshotted on the right. You can find it um, published about six days ago um, by the Manatu Hauora. Now, just to, that's really, you guys know that stuff, but just to acknowledge that um, to achieve equity, often we need to put more resources into the, um, into the communities that are significantly disadvantaged. Um, we need to be, uh, we need to be really active about it. And we, it's okay, it's okay. Um, there's the definition of equity up, up there. Um, it's the Ministry of Health one, Manatu Hauora. Now, Paiora Act talks about uh, the real important aspects of um, working in a population health way and collaborating with agencies and organizations to address the wider determinants of health. We gotta do this. So how to do this? Look, I don't, I don't have time to like go through it now, but I want to acknowledge Alex, um, Alex's talk. I want to acknowledge um, Amajit's work in the sense of creating and having clear models of system change that we can utilize when addressing the determinants of health collectively. One of those key um, uh, frameworks where we have is our um, Tsutsuriti or Watangi framework. Like just, it's very, very good to think about um, how do we engage, uh, particularly with Māori, um, and how do we share power? Often we're, when we're trying to change systems, I believe that we're often fussing around with policies, practices and resource flows. And actually we don't acknowledge what it's all based on. What it is, a lot of it is based on whose knowledge is valued, our actual mindsets. And that's about the mental models. And it also is based on power. Who has the most power? 
And in my experience, in order to engage with Māori as, as working in, in, the, in the health sector, I'm Māori, sure. But if I don't acknowledge the power that I hold in the position and acknowledge the, 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 the underpower um, that Māori organisations have, I won't get anywhere with a relationship. That's just in my experience. So I think it's very, very important that we acknowledge power in any um, engagement process. Um, and in order for system change to happen, we're going to need to acknowledge that. Now, uh, collective impact framework. I just chucked these in just a few minutes ago because I just wanted to like, hey, look, there was some cool stuff come up in Alex's talk. And I just wanted to say, hey, look, here, guys, there's a Tiara Fiti engagement guidelines. Have a read of them. They're quite valuable. Um, it talks about the, the engagement ladder. Um, and then also what I want is us to like, we talked about mana. And often when we engage with community, it's an extractive process. And as I said, extraction um, is a colonizing process often. We extract knowledge and then we de design our cool plans that don't work exactly. So let us, uh, let us think about some of the frameworks that enable the mana to be, there, there to be a reciprocity, that there's a meeting together, that if we, if we engage with, we give back. That's the, that's the utu, we, we share. And some of these are just underpin Māori, these are just Māori values. Also, I want everything, all of our work, to be underpinned by the principles of Māori data sovereignty. We got to think, sure, row by row, if we have data, it's an individual's data. They have a right to it. Once we start to talk about populations, we have to ask the question, whose data is it? Who has control over it? Who can use it? Um, and who's disseminating it to act on it? So that's just a, a dump, including, thanks, Alex. I, I put your little um, snap, snapshot of your thing. So, and what I think we need to do to bring pie order to life, I've got about five minutes, I think, haven't I? I think there's a, there's a couple of things. We have to address the determinants of health at all levels. We have to acknowledge racism as a key determinant of health. And we have to share power and use system change models to collectively improve those determinants of health. So. That's the first part of my presentation. Um, I think, how long have I got? I don't know, I can't, I can't see anyone in the room, so apart from the backs of someone. Um, so I think maybe, or Armajit's just text me, thanks Armajit. Three minutes, okay. So, um, <laughs> thanks Armajit. Right, what we, what we know, we want primary community care that is person and whānau centred, it's affordable, it's continuous, it's comprehensive and it's co coordinated. This is from, you know, Declaration of Almorata, Declaration of um, Astana. Um, and there's a lovely picture on the right from the, um, from the centre. Now, done well, this care does improve population health and it reduces inequities for those reasons I said before. There's a nice 208 page document uh, that you can read and has the summary of the evidence which I'm talking about. Done well, we need to consider all these building blocks. There'll be various frames of these building blocks, some of those listed in that, um, in, in that document. Uh, so we do need data. Um, I'm not gonna talk about impanelment, uh, apart from saying that it's really a, uh, you, if you're delivering primary care, you need to have consistency um, of, of staff ideally, um, that in a team that wraps around the, 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 the patients and the families. So they're just kind of like family, but professional. Um, it makes it safe and it's effective, it's important. Um, so there we go, that's the impanelment side. And look, we do this, we do it. The NUCA model, that's Canada. Um, uh, and the, we do it at Hutt Union, we do it at Order Tour, with Takari Maitiata, the Māori, the Whānau Order Collective out in the hut does this, the Māori Order model that, um, that Helmut was talking about, the Tūruki, that's uh, happening. Uh, ah, my cousin's Carl Eagleton, Helmut. Um, and, and this is just a picture of, of, of one from his masters uh, about like people's experiences in waiting rooms. Yeah, I agree, he's a, he's a good guy and um, does a damn good job. Um, and it's reflective. Uh, now, this is worth a read too. Um, like, what do we need to do um, to develop effective whānau centred care? Uh, now, one thing that I'm just going to comment that our ASH rates, there's us at the right, pretty high internationally. Um, some of the communities that are most um, vulnerable aren't accessing primary care. Um, some of it we're losing, like we're lost maternity services and heart and auditor is struggling to maintain its dental services. 
it's underfunded. Our ASH rates, ambulatory sensitive hospitalization rates remain high. They're about two times. There we go, latest data, March 22. Um, you can get this online. Um, now, I can't see you all, and I do this in presentation, but like, so if we look at the most, the longest lived census area unit and the shortest lived census area unit, population 2,100 on average, the difference in life expectancy between those census area units is, I tell you, is E. So in essence, when we're developing localities and you know we work, that's why I don't see people that are over 60 in Poor Māori, hardly ever. <laughs> that's, the, that's the data, that's where it's from, uh, from 2005. Uh, that's the life expectancy at birth. So at the bottom end there, we got to think about our localities as like basically third world country style of, of um, locality planning. Um, it is brutal. Um, people are dying of third world diseases, um, which is so different than, than many of the large community or the communities of 2000 odd uh, elsewhere. So we're ex ex extreme differences in our society. They are drastic um, and we need to plan co-localities accordingly. But as the, the, the policy settings are very similar and the elephant in the room um, is the funding. Um, read it. Here we have professors, you know, Joe Baxter, Peter Crampton, Tim Scopes, Robin Gould, Carol Atmore saying it's the elephant in the room. This is important. We need to address it. The Waitangi Tribunal tells us uh, that we recommend the Crown conduct an urgent and thorough review of funding of primary care. It hasn't been done yet. Yes, the methodology to estimate the underfunding of primary care has been done. This is, the, um, this is the report. It was commissioned by the Waitangi Tribunal. It's worth a read, it's available online. But basically what that tells us is that in the highest needs communities, they uh, pay the, the income, total income is less than the wealthy communities. The data's all there and it doesn't matter who does the analysis, this is done by Mo, um, Mona Jeffries, the funding does not account for the concentrations of complexity in our communities. Um, uh, and that's with the primary care, um, the primary care services that are providing health services, the same exists um, as articulated in Heather Kames research um, that Māori providers, as we all know, are underfunded, their contracts are shorter and they're over audited. Um, and I have many, many stories about that. So, um, and what this is, I know I'm gonna finish and wrap up please. Thank you very much, Amajit. Yes, um, that, it's costing the country $5 billion a year. That's the estimates. Um, so we need to address it. So that's some um, detail, but so in overall, we must refocus more attention and resources toward primary and community care to achieve pie order. We must enable skilled staff to run primary community care that aligns with the aspirations. And we must equitably fund primary and community care uh, that serves the communities of the highest need. Nordata. Thank you very much for that, um, Dougal. Thank you for being a part of um, the Coalition of the Willing that is decolonising the systems which are riddled with systemic racism and as a, uh, as a result of colonisation. You couldn't see in the room, but there was a lot of head nodding when you were talking about that. We know this. Um, talking about seeds, I just wanted to say one of my favourite quotes um, when working in public service sectors such as health is we plant seeds for trees that we may never sit under. And so we have to have faith and hope in that work. 